jumping over obstacles, still cold. Never losing character, still cold. Wait, let me check my temperature, still cold. You feel us, but we don't feel you. Uh, can't you see I'm working? Leave a message. I don't know what you be expecting. Y'all been sleeping on it. It's a thousand. Yeah. This year at SEMA, the African American Racers Association promoted and sponsored the Still I Race booth, which featured cars and bikes from current and previous African American racers. Our friend Tommy Bolton, Tombo, was featured along with a couple of his bikes. Uh, and then here's the other part. You race IDVA. That's right, young Nash drag bike. That's right. And they only had they had a black tech to race. That's right, that's right. That were you. Come on, man. You remember then, yeah. man. Yeah, because you talk shit to everybody. Hey, but I did. Well, that, what, I told what you I, I did. I yeah. did. Yeah, yeah, but, and I said, but I was hyped. Yeah, I, I came back and said, man, I got you. And you said, what? Yeah, you, I remember that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Check it out. That been years and years ago. Yeah, yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on. And you said, you said, I said, I got you, dog. Don't worry about it. And you, like, you looked at me and said, all right, man. I, I'll calm down. Let's see. Oh, yeah. We know him. That's right. What's 200 miles an hour feel like? Everything slows down. Wow. Everything slows down. It would be, it's kind of crazy because uh, I believe I went 200 miles an hour before I went 200 miles an hour because I know the feeling when everything slowed down, when you actually see people up in the stands or see people on the street, then you Whoa. know you're fine. Mm -hmm. I actually think I went 200 miles an hour on Lincoln and Purging in LA at a street race. <laughs> oh. Hi, <laughs> right, I'm here with Tommy, Tombo, Tommy, Tommy Bolton. Bolton. Tommy Bolton. <laughs> the one, the only. <laughs> so we're here at SEMA in the Still I Race booth. So we're here looking at his two bikes, but uh, more importantly, we're here looking at the display that's showing all your records. So. Right there. Picture perfect. Okay, so what do you think about this booth? Uh, the importance of it. I think it's I think it's wonderful. You know, and yesterday just bringing all of everybody together uh, really sounds sounds good in numbers. I think it's fun. Still, I race and it just highlights the accomplishments that the blacks have did in this in the motorsports industry. Right. It is drag racing, road racing, or Indy Lights, or drifting, or big wheel car racing. Right. It's fun to have everybody united in one area. I think it's fun, and this the response that we have got being here this weekend is just unbelievable. You know, so that's great. You know, my you know hats out to Chris for putting us all together. Right. Right. So um, he's going to be here next year too? Yes. Awesome. So you'll be here? Maybe yeah. uh, with the bikes or without either one? It doesn't matter. Some, it'll be some different bikes because I'm going to keep on building as long as uh, you know, the health stays good. Right. If I can stay away from the fried chicken, I know I'll be able to be here. This bike here, this uh, orange bike here, this one is a turbo bike, but you've been on this bike. Yes. How recently? Uh, a couple months ago. Yeah, I've been, I've been on it. And how fast? Oh, uh, it's a garage bike, so I can't I can't talk about <laughs> it. You know? But it's very it's fast enough why I don't want to ride it anymore. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> scared you? Yeah, <laughs> a well, little bit. I'm not I'm not really scared of it, but uh, by me being old, a little diabetes and a couple heart attacks, I don't I don't want the unfortunate thing to blank out when it's because it does. It's so fast and accelerates. The bikes are way, way faster than they was when I was riding back in, in the 80s and the 90s and stuff. They're, they're so much faster and technology is so much better. Right. You know, where the bikes do everything. Yeah. So, 
the bike shifts by itself and it wheelies and lets itself down by itself. So a lot of this stuff that happens on the bikes happens so fast that, you know, I want to, I, I feel that I'm better letting somebody else do it and do my tuning from the back. Understood. Understood. Mm -hmm. So, and then you have one of the custom big wheel bikes here. Yes. So this thing is gorgeous as always. So can you tell me a little bit about these bikes? Well, this bike right here sports a, a, a Tombow Tombo custom bag of frame with an RC engineered 30 inch wheel uh, with a Trash Turbo unit on it. And basically everything on this bike is, is custom made. Uh, me and my guy Smoke, we did this bike in our shop. And he kind of he taught me a new way of building bikes. But we know where we, we we set it all up and then just took it apart. So within 30 days it was done. Yeah. But it took it took about three months of planning to get it done in 30 days. Wow, wow. Okay, well, I will say that, that any uh, dry racing influence uh, that you had on Mike has definitely been uh, 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 par parlayed them to me. Oh, so cool. we've learned <laughs> so much from you. Appreciate your time. And uh, especially me, of course. <laughs> so uh, thank you for your time, Tommy. Uh, is there anything anytime. else you want to add? Anytime, Meg. <laughs> okay, all right. I'm at Tommy Bolton, a.k.a. Tombo. Growing up in South Central LA, Tommy Bolton is arguably the most accomplished and influential African-American motorcycle racer of all time. During his career, he has won over 25 championships and during a time it was unheard of, he secured major sponsorships. Other great African-American motorcycle drag racers are on record stating Tombo has inspired them to get into racing. His most notable accomplishment came in 1990 when he became the first African-American drag racer to pass the 200 mile per hour mark with a 7.18 time at 200 five miles per hour. Mm -hmm. Tombo started racing at the age of 19, and by the mid 80s, mid 80s, <laughs> by the mid 80s, he began to receive notoriety as the first African American to go to the forefront of the sport. In 1988, Bolton became the first to win top 10 plates in all major drag bike USA categories, Pro Street, Pro Stock, Pro Cop, and Top Fuel competing on a funny bike. Tombo entered the competitive world of NHRA post-stock motorcycle drag racing in the early 90s. He became the category's first African-American racer to receive a major sponsorship when Torco backed him. By the mid-90s, the motorcycle drag racing scene flourished on the East Coast, so Tombo moved to Oklahoma City to be more centrally located. That is when Tombo decided it was time to focus on tuning the bike and as a tuner, he won 11 championships. Today, Tombo owns and operates Tombo Racing, where he builds sport bikes, drag bikes, and batteries. Ladies and gentlemen, Tommy Bolton, aka Tombo. <laughs> Tombo, you're an OG of the game. A lot of people look up to you and say you've inspired them. But who inspired you to get into racing? Uh, growing up in South Central LA, I seen everything. I seen people street racing, and then I would follow them to the drag strip, and then down the street from my mom's house, of course it was Vance and Hines. And I would have to say it was Vance and Hines because they worked for a gentleman uh, called Russ Collins, and his shop was RC Engineering. And uh, first time I got to go to the drag strip, and I seen these what these guys was about, I was hooked. And this is Vance and Hines before they were Vance and Hines, right? Before they was Vance and Hines. <laughs> it was just uh, Terry and Terry Vance and Byron Hines. That's awesome. So I raced and actually raced there in 1985. And, and it started from there. Uh, and I'm going to the NHRA races and I'm seeing all of these guys with all these uniforms and all of these things. and. Uh, and then I, it, it popped, you know, by me being African-American, black, you know, so we, the one thing that we had that nobody else had was style. 
And then I came back to the track with the colors of the bike, the shirts and everything. And that made a big difference right there. And then like I was talking to Destiny a couple of days ago and one of the things that happened, I was still trying to street race and go to the NHRA. Then I get this call one day and it's uh, Steve Gibbs calling me and telling me, hey, Tom, you can't be racing in the street and racing with us. <laughs> That was the end right there. But, you know, it taught me how to go to the next level. And Tom, about you having your own race team, right? I mean, you go from being on the seat to, to watching and, and coaching guys. I mean, I know that's got to be difficult. I, I played football once upon a time, and then I coached in college for a year. And, you know, the hardest thing is when you know how something should be done and you're trying to teach other guys to do it, and you might not get it the way you want it. So how is that, you know, running your own race team? Well, it's, it gets difficult, but, you know, I can handle it, you know, it's just sometimes people have a, a way they want to do certain things. But by me being in the, in the seat and row before, I can tell you what, is the, what this is going to do, what this is going to do. It's like I was talking to Dunk a little while ago. I said, man, you need to get on the bike. No! <laughs> I, said, I said, I can work with you because he's not afraid of speed, you know, he, he can get on that thing. So you got to just, you know, being the, the, the leader, the coach, the crew chief and all of that stuff comes in one package and I can, they can, I can relate what's going on on the track and how to, how to speak to people, you know, like Destiny, she speaks so well, you know, if I was a sponsor, if I was a big business man, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that smile. <laughs> If there's one thing that you can tell somebody, one word of advice to help them grow in this industry, what would you tell them? In, in order to be successful in this stuff, and I, I've had a lot of people tell me no, and so that made me keep on going and keep on trying. If it's something I couldn't do, like Sage, I go find somebody who can do it. That's what got me to where I'm at, and I'm gonna keep on leaning on that. I'm, I'm, 62 years old. So I will find me a youngster in a minute. How did you get on Facebook? <laughs> Mike met Tommy in 2003-ish and introduced me to him in 2006, not long after we met. Tommy has mentored Mike since day one with bikes, building engines, and everything in between. Most everyone in the motorcycle drag racing, even car drag racing world, knows or has heard of Tommy Bolton. In addition to being a champion racer, tuner, and builder, he's one of the most wonderful humans we know. For Mike and me, he's a mentor, a friend, a surrogate father, and always a joy to be around. And we're not alone. Everybody knows Tombo. For almost two decades, we've been privy to know Tommy's records and some of his accomplishments. But it is incredibly awesome to see him and other African American racers in the motorsport industry getting their much deserved recognition, especially on the world stage of SEMA. We sincerely appreciate Chris Harris's and Pamela Brown Mathis's effort to make this booth a reality. We look forward to next year. <laughs>